Live from San Francisco, it's The Cube. Covering Red Hat Summit 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat. Hello, welcome back everyone. Day three of wall-to-wall -wall coverage here at Red Hat Summit 2018, live in San Francisco, California, here at Moscone West. I'm John Troyer, your co-host of theCUBE with John Troyer, analyst co-host this week. He's the co-founder of Tech Reckoning, uh, advisory and community development firm. Our next guest is Arvest Sethi, Senior Vice President, General Manager of Hewlett Packard Enterprises Point Next, HPE. Great to see you, thanks for coming Great on. Great to see you as well, thank you. Thank so you. obviously, there's no secret HPE's been partners, been partnering with companies for many generations. Red Hat is one of the big strategic partner. Yes. Um, a lot of services opportunities, a lot of transformation happening. And the biggest thing is that true private cloud and hybrid cloud and public cloud, it's all happening in IoT Edge. It's kind of seeing pretty clearly what's happening. Yeah. On-premise isn't going away. No. Nope. <laughs> it's going to look like cloud, it's going to run like a cloud. Yeah. Has to work with a cloud or yes. clouds, plural. And then you got the IoT Edge out there. That's right all kind of coming together with software, Kubernetes, containers, all kind of being glue layers in here. So, you know, it must be good for you guys to say, okay, yeah. customers can now see what you guys have been promoting. So what is, what is HPE no, doing I, with Red Hat? How does that tie into that sure, sure. You know, transformation with the cloud? I, you said it very well, John. In fact, uh, when we talk to our customers, so whether they realize it or not, it's a hybrid world, and their environments are hybrid. And like you said, private clouds are also not going anywhere. In fact, uh, you know, we did the CTP acquisition, Red Pixie acquisition, and this is really all to help clients on their cloud journey. It doesn't really matter to us whether the workload ends up in AWS, Google, Azure, or on-prem or dedicated infrastructure. So that's actually been a huge plus for us to really have a seat at the table, to have a, a discussion on customers' workload strategy. Now, a partner like Red Hat, I mean, we've been together, uh, working together for probably about 18 years now, and it's been a long-standing partnership. Uh, who are their number one OEM partner, but also to the point you made, I think from a services standpoint, it's just a huge opportunity. You know, customers tell us uh, anyone can do infrastructure service, where they're looking for a platform as a service. So jointly with our consumption capabilities and Red Hat OpenShift, now we're giving them true container platform as a service. Containerization, I, we were talking yesterday on our wrap up, yeah, you can you can bring in the new yeah. without killing the old, yeah. and but it's really fundamental because people want cloud scale, they want horizontally scalable uh, application DevOps and programming yeah. infrastructure as code, but they can't just throw out their legacy stuff. With containers, it allows them to nurture those applications and workloads yeah. and let it take its natural course. Uh, this is actually good for <laughs> services because you can. There's a solution there. That's right. That's yeah. Absolutely. In fact, uh, customers tell us when they're looking for the platform, it's not just to help them on their new build. They're looking for help also to run the existing environment. And most of the times, it's not practical to refactor, re-architect every single of the legacy applications. And because some of them applications, as you know, uh, they, were, they were done uh, to leverage the performance optimization on the underlying infrastructure piece of it. And so one of the things we're doing jointly with Red Hat is leverage containerization to provide the portability for the applications to move between the different environments. And whether it's private cloud, public cloud, but the key thing is portability and mobility, and that's sweet spot for containerization. Give some use cases of, of customers. Take us through a, a day in the life of maybe a couple different examples where you guys are engaging with Red Hat, where you're coming in, the customers are like, okay, here's my situation. What are some of the trends and patterns that you see with customers? What specifically uh, are you worried? Is a workload moving it to the multiple yeah. clouds? Is it more you know, uh, replatforming on premise? Yeah. What are some of the things that so you guys are I doing with services? I would say you know, bulk of our engagements, uh, and that's one thing uh, that we feel really good about jointly with Red Hat. Uh, we have really shifted our engagement model to be much more outcome driven. So the discussions with the clients always start off with like a workshop. And within that workshop, we're actually understanding you know, where the customer really is trying to go, what business outcomes they're trying to achieve, before we start to kind of push a specific uh, technology stack or specific solution set. And by having that alignment, in fact, we talk about that IT needs to be embedded with the business, not alignment, it embedded with the business. And uh, because the role of IT has changed, so when we talk about workload, right, it's, uh, it's about uh, you know, no longer, and I talked about this earlier today, uh, you're no longer running uh, workloads just within the four-wall data center. And uh, the traditional view of that IT owns and operates the four-wall data center, that's just dead. And so it's really more about managing the supply chain. 
And so we talk about uh, the overall workload strategy, which workloads make the most sense to go in public cloud, private cloud, and then the discussion also centers around their application portfolio and really understanding which applications truly need to be cloud native, uh, which ones that do really need to be just the lift and shift, and uh, this whole portability concept comes into play. And, uh, and that's one thing jointly with Red Hat, because Red Hat is really good jointly with us on driving this kind of innovation workshops. And, uh, and, and you, you heard this earlier today as well. And, and that's just the fun of it. I mean, no longer you're talking about PowerPoint presentations, this and that. It's getting in a room, getting on a whiteboard, and talking about you know, what kind of journey really makes sense for that particular yeah, customer. That's been really notable here this week at yeah. this conference, right? There's a lot of tech, a lot of software talked about, yeah. but also uh, on the keynotes, a lot of people talking about culture, transformation, yeah. getting, getting beyond your, your, your process and right. the places you get stuck as, right. as IT professionals. Yeah. Uh, so I, that's, a, that's a great way to approach it, right? Nobody starts with a list of SKUs. No. And absolutely, <laughs> the other point is that uh, one of the things that always gets missed is the, the focus around the management of change. And that's the, one of the key pieces we emphasize so that uh, not just the business processes, but the culture, the people, how do you kind of bring them along the change journey? So we actually put a lot of emphasis on the whole area around management of change. We actually have a practice that does, uh, uh, this is one of the key areas they focus on, and so you're absolutely right, key focus area. I did want to. I did want do. Did want to flip to the products for a second. Um, there was an announcement um, here now, and, and uh, talk a little bit about uh, HPE Synergy, uh, composable infrastructure right. with OpenShift. Sure. Uh, uh, if you can, maybe if you have a, a headline on on exactly how you guys describe Synergy, and then yeah. maybe how how are we working sure. with OpenShift? So you know the HPE Synergy. The best way I can describe it is uh, it, it is truly industry's first composable infrastructure, and uh, it gives you the ability to. Uh, pool fluid resources uh, and uh, with software intelligence built in and unified API, it really g it gives you the ability to pool the resources that you need for a specific application. In fact, I use the analogy, uh, it's kind of like building Legos and uh, you kind of pull it together based on what you're trying to do at a given moment and then you decompose it and uh, build something new. So it's all done via software. And, uh, and truly gives you that flexibility that the customers have been seeking. So it's just, uh, to me, it's, a, it's a gotten great market traction across the globe, and uh, we're just seeing country momentum. And jointly with uh, Red Hat, uh, what we've done is now with the, uh, announcing new solutions like you re the one you refer to, uh, to support Ansible automation of the uh, uh, Red Hat OpenShift on the Synergy platform with the three bar and the Nimble product lines. Uh, and, uh, and it just helps scale uh, the OpenShift and while making container operations simple, scalable, and more importantly, repeatable. All right, so I got to give you a process. I want to make sure that I get this out there because you guys were early with composable. Yeah. And I, Dave Vellante and I would had a debate on this at one of your HP discovers where I was really loving the composable message. Although it was kind of for a different reason, but at that time DevOps was really picking up steam. Yeah. But it's actually happening now. This is yeah. three years later. The level of granularity now at the services level as microservices, as it becomes the architecture of the future, yeah. The services model is literally, what do you want? Yeah. It's not, here's the solution, it's like, what do you need, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So you're buying off the menu, if you will. Yeah. So that, that changes the game. So congratulations on the, having that yeah. composable message first. But I got to ask you, the impact to the engagements. Yeah. So you now have menu of services. Does that change how you guys go to marketing? You mentioned you do kick off meetings, you do the needs assessments, I get that. You know, check, good, good, good approach. But yeah. the customers now, they just want to make sure it's custom for them. How does that change your engagement? Yeah, you know, at the CXO level, uh, the discussion, no matter which way you start the discussion, it tends to kind of follow into, uh, you know, a few buckets, whether it's about uh, generating additional revenue, going to market quicker, or it's about uh, safe to invest, uh, reducing their operating expenses, or it's about securing their information network. And so one of the things we find is, especially if you take a look at even the containers, uh, you, know, uh, app, you know, applications uh, deploying it, it's one thing to deploy in the test and development environment, but if you're trying to scale that within an enterprise, you know, the enterprises look for added features, whether it's security, whether it's persistent storage, uh, uh, and, uh, and again, the focus always turns into what can you do to help drive the total cost of ownership down? And I think with Red Hat, uh, this is one thing that works great with open standards. Uh, the 
the focus is really much more around uh, not just the simplicity, uh, 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 reducing cost, but it's also about improving performance, whether it's in physical, physical or virtual environment. So you're right, the menu of services, uh, you know, whether it's you're talking about IoT use case, and uh, I think you're going to see more and more of that with the user experience the focus that we talked about, context-aware apps. Uh, look at, I mean, I use the example of uh, you know, going to the airport or uh, getting into um, a tr you know, whatever transportation you're using these days, uh, but the point from point A to point B, you're no longer funding through cash or credit cards, right? Uh, it's a very easy experience, much more personalized, much more usable, and I love what some of the hospitality uh, uh, franchises are doing, whether you look at Starwood Properties, Marriott, uh, uh, you know, now you use your mobile device to access your room. And as soon as you get into some of the hotel properties, as soon as you access their Wi-Fi coverage, uh, all of a sudden you can actually, uh, the hotel property picks you up, uh, they can provide you with the navigation, how to get to your room, and depending on your profile and whether you opted in or opted out, uh, they will push and their partners will push some specific services to you. So how we're able to create uh, that kind of experience and drive additional revenue, and all that is possible to the point you just made, yeah. is truly, uh, a flourishing ecosystem of microservices and apps driven by the I think, APIs. I think the business is now seeing that, which is great about them having a clear line of sight that right. these new apps and new experiences is going to drive top line revenue yeah. for your customers. I got to ask you about the services now. With more services comes more delivery, right? So options, ecosystem. You guys have a pretty big ecosystem. Yeah. Red Hat has a lot of other providers. Yeah. You guys always work well with multiple companies. How are you guys engaging on Point Next with yeah. uh, now new sets of service providers right. in your network? You got right. cloud service, yeah. and you got someone actually maybe it could be a, an integrator, it could be yeah. a software developer. Sure. How do you deal with the new, the new stakeholders in yeah. your equation? No, so you know, after all the spin marches have been completed now, uh, and I think after the DXC one, it really opened up the door to uh, get a lot of the system integrators back at the table because they don't really view us as a competitor anymore. Uh, because we no longer have uh, this uh, the large uh, 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 the EDS acquisition that we had now with DXC. So uh, you know whether you look at Accenture, whether you look at Deloitte and uh, other key SIs, we're actually partnering with them very well, both in terms of the joint solution creation, but also when we talk about true uh, digital transformation for a client, uh, the lot of expertise they bring to us is very complementary uh, to what we have. So one of the things we do very well is uh, really around the technology advisory services. What some of these SIs do, they kind of bring more of the business uh, advisory services as well as the specific vertical depth around the specific verticals, whether it's uh, FSIs, whether it's retail. So when somebody's talking about retail of the future or uh, something like that, you marry the two together and you have a strong value proposition. So I think the area that uh, we have to put a lot more emphasis upon is more around program management. And because now you actually are trying to show that one outcome for the client so it's very important whether you're working with the ISVs, whether you're working with the SIs, whether you're working with the other integrators and your own resources, how you kind of bring that pool together around specific tracks to deliver a one common objective for the client. So program management plays a huge role in this process. For the folks watching, yeah. um, what should they know about HPE Point Next that they, that they may or may not know about or should know about that, that highlights what you guys are doing? Yeah. And you can simplify, what is the value proposition that Point Next is bringing to uh, customers? Yeah. You know, as the, as the brand itself states, uh, Point Next, is really about working with the clients on defining what's next in their journey. And, uh, and so one of the things I would say is, that, and a lot of people get surprised by this, even with, after all the spin merge, uh, we are 25,000 plus people strong. And uh, we have a lot of great differentiation when it comes to some of these solutions. And one thing we do very well is partner and whether it's Red Hat and other SIs, and bring some unique, innovative solutions to the market. And, uh, and one of the things Jim talked about here is all about uh, accelerating user-driven innovation. And when you take a look at some of the use cases we're rolling out, and I talked about the analytics uh, with the one AI project, and how we're helping manufacturing clients or other use cases to truly analyze patterns and predict failures and increase productivity, these discussions, uh, customers truly really trust us. Uh, with the Red Pixie and CTP acquisition, uh, we're no longer just having on-prem discussions. We have a strong public cloud knowledge, and it doesn't matter whether your cloud journey involves uh, uh, AWS, Google, Azure, and whatnot, uh, we're able to actually provide a very objective roadmap uh, for the workload, the strategy, and the transformation journey. The users in the, are in the communities, as Jim pointed out, we interviewed him yesterday, the communities in open source are now your, in your, also your customers. Right. So your customers are also participating in these projects yes. upstream. 
Are you guys doing open source work? What's Point Next doing? Are you guys relying on uh, that community? Is, it, is there a crossover between your customers and those users in the open source community? Yeah, I mean, you know, we've always uh, had a very strong partnership with the open source communities. Uh, we contributed a lot to the open source communities. And if you take a look at now, as we're working with the number of uh, this next generation of partners, whether it's Docker, Scality, uh, and, uh, and Red Hat and others, uh, it's uh, truly opened up uh, the boundaries as to uh, what can we push to drive new kind of solutions there. And I love what some of the uh, speakers said yesterday. You, you remember the example from Boston uh, Children's Hospital where they talked about where they, they didn't want to deal with the complexity. They'd rather focus on what they do best. And so one of the things we're focused on with the open source communities is uh, driving more standardization and automation. And so you can run applications at scale. You can run analytics at scale. And I think those are some things we bring to the table. Great, and, I, and the real thing about what's going on now is with these abstraction layers is an opportunity to create new services and yeah. accelerate the services. So congratulations, oh, great you. to have you on the, on, on the program. Thanks for sharing the update. Absolutely. And congratulations on your deep partnership with Red Hat. Good to see HP Point Next uh, doing well. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much. Live coverage it. here in San Francisco, California for Red Hat Summit 2018 will continue. I'm John Furrier, John Troyer. Stay with us, more coverage after this short break. already know about a facility that's a problematic because they smell it, they see it, but 